guys. <laughs> it's time for another video. I've been quite busy lately preparing different things, including my merch. They're coming out soon, but I thought I'd give you a sneak peek. We're gonna make some of that today and talk about the topic. The worst parts of art school. Meanwhile, enjoy this time lapse of some of my merch designs. You get a little sneak peek at what is to come in the very near future. And I hope you guys enjoy some of these stories. <laughs> the worst parts of art school. First off, I'm going to start with the general education program. Now I am all for a well-rounded education, getting chances to explore your educational and future professional options. But if I am real, I spent a lot of time in classes that I did not use or need to further myself toward my future goals. It's time I wish I could have spent in additional art classes in the studio or even tailored toward taking more practical business classes that I could have applied to my future professional endeavors because goodness knows I was spat out of school one lost puppy trying to make it in the art world. Which leads me to point number two, a lack of business preparation. Granted, I'm sure every art program is different, every student is different, etc. But I was craving way more information on how to make a living as an artist. We did have a business of art class, which partly I may have been too immature to take full advantage of or fully understand, but personally I could have used much more information because I felt very scared and lost and the learning curve has been huge for me since I got out of school and tried to make my way. So my advice here, seek out opportunities to learn even if they're not built into your required courses, you'll be glad you did. Next three, being graded arbitrarily on your art. At the end of my art program, I will say they had an amazing practice of grading us based on completing a time log and fulfilling a required number of weekly studio hours. I love this because it meant we were graded based on our effort and commitment rather than teachers' personal preferences, though I have one specific memory of a class that did not use this method. I turned in a painting I liked and I got a B, which isn't terrible, but I didn't have any understanding of what criteria I had not measured up to and was super confused confused because afterwards the teacher bought the painting. So really to this day I don't understand what made it worth a B to him, but also worth a 50 from him. Number 4. Philosophical Art Readings Okay, my teachers did a phenomenal job expanding my understanding of what is art, what can it be, why different and evolving art forms are so relevant and exciting. Through discussions, videos, performances, they really expanded my very narrow view of art's limits, and I love them for that. Where I struggled was the more philosophical, metaphorical, long art essays we would read. It probably partly has to do with me not being a super strong reader, but I really struggled to understand many of the essays we would read, and we read a lot. A thick textbook-sized stack worth of essays that we would read and write responses to weekly. Often the language was very flowery and symbolic and filled with words I didn't know, and at times honestly I couldn't figure out even the connection they held to art in general. I don't even know if this is relatable. Maybe other schools don't have this much reading, maybe you're an awesome reader and love these things, but dang did I at least wish I could follow those essays better when next week I had to turn in a terrible response and very awkwardly try to contribute to class discussion. Number five, the unconstructive art critique. Now, interestingly, I went to a very conservative school with a very contemporary art program and it was the bomb, but I was probably the only traditional painter in my program during that time and I was very frequently critiqued for my work being aesthetically driven versus conceptually driven. Honestly, now I'm really glad that I was challenged to think about my motives and concepts so much, but I do think that aesthetically driven artwork has a place still in the contemporary art world, and I wish I had not been so insecure and defensive back in the day. My work had and still has a very strong visual emphasis, and I wish there had been more support of the validity of realism and traditionalism in my critique groups. Speaking of my defensive awkward stage though, that leads us to point six 
6, the wonderful and also torturously awkward dynamic of defensive critiques. You know those times when someone immediately claims their choices were style or concept driven when really we all know they came from some skill limitations or lack of time? It's kind of like on Project Runway when a model walks out and the dress is ripped and fraying and the judge says that is a mess and then the designer tries to say, I meant to do that. And you're just sitting at home like, if I could go back in time and give myself this advice, I would. In art school, get ready for lots of opinions, be true to yourself and your own choices, but also be humble, be open so you can learn and improve. You definitely do not go to art school making or thinking about art the same way you will when you leave. A lot will change, so take it all in, try not to take it personal, and just enjoy the ride. Well. Now I think this topic would also be really great played out as a full on hoodie skit. So if you guys have any ideas what your least favorite parts of art school as a junior high, high school, or even college student are or were, let me know in the comments. I will integrate some of them and then let's, let's make a skit. Hope you guys are excited for the merch launch. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week and I'll see you next Friday. Goodbye.